you just clap in front of your face for me? That's great. And rolling, good to go. Hi, I am Alexander Ludwig, and I am biting the bullet for addiction. And I don't have a voice right now because I was just shooting a movie for the last two days. So excuse me. I mean, I guess I'll start from the beginning uh, of when I started realizing I had a problem. But um, I was probably around 14 years old when I had my first drink. Um, and, uh, and I loved it. And, you know, some people have different experiences of... Uh, of how it felt for them. For me, I, I was an instant addict. I never stopped at one. Uh, I think that night I probably had 14 shots. I was 14 years old. I had this crazy wild night. Uh, without getting too, too much into specifics, that became a trend for me over the next uh, 10 years, is uh, Alexander would be that crazy guy who would have these crazy nights and these unbelievable stories to tell. And I was so... Um, convinced that that was who I am, that I was that guy, that I had to be the one um, bringing that life to the party because nobody else would do it. <laughs> and it's funny because now when I go into those AA meetings, I, I realize that <laughs> I think everybody felt that way. You know, everybody I'm in those rooms with are usually the hard, hardest partiers, you know, but um, um, that was my identity for so long. And I thought that that was what made me, me, and what made people cool was that I could be the life of a party and I could, you know, socialize with everybody. And I was always a friendly drunk. Um, and if I haven't really explained it now, uh, my main problem, I, I like to say that I was struggling with addiction because as far as I'm concerned, addiction is addiction is addiction. You know, you can be addicted to drugs and alcohol. You can be addicted to uh, food, you can be addicted to sex, you can be addicted to, uh, I mean, so many things. I, I, at this point, I've lost count. Uh, but, but the way it works with your brain is kind of the same, I would say, for, for everything. So I like to bite the bullet for addiction because I want to keep it broad because I think that everybody who struggles with addiction, no matter what it is, is usually struggling with the same thing. Essentially, it got so bad um, especially in college uh, at the time when the Hunger Games had come out and uh, I was on the top, top of the world um, and it started becoming really destructive. Uh, my substance abuse was um, at an all-time high and I didn't, I didn't quite realize that what I was doing wasn't normal. It's only until I got sober that I realized that, uh, that the way I went out uh, wasn't the way everyone else was. And... You know, now if I walk into a bar and I see how everyone else handles their alcohol, uh, how different my experience was with it. I think all in all, uh, long story short, um, I ended up going to rehab uh, and it was the best decision I ever made. Uh, I spent most of my money to do it, which was a really, really hard decision to make. Uh, but I wanted to get the best care I possibly could at the time because this isn't the person I wanted to be. Um, why I'm doing this now is because I so wish that when I was in that dark place, and, and also I, I should also mention I, I struggled with depression, anxiety, panic attacks my whole life as well. So I also think that this was a way from, for me to medicate myself as well. And um, it wasn't until I really asked, help, asked for help that, that a door was finally opened to this kind of new life I'm living now. Uh, and that was the hardest part for me was, was really kind of coming to grips with the fact that I had a problem and grieving for that life that I was gonna lose because that was my everything, that was my identity. And I was kind of going through that denial for a while before I realized I'd gone to a few meetings and a very close friend of mine had also gotten sober. We lived together when we were um, working together. So, and he was like, and I, and I was like, be honest with me, man. Like, what do you what do you see when you see me? Like, what when you see the way I tr treat alcohol? When you see what happens to me? He's like, man, you're honestly, I I can't diagnose you, but yeah, I would say that you have all the same characteristics that I have before I got sober, you know. But that word is is a scary one to come to terms with, just because you don't want to pigeonhole yourself, and you know, it, nobody wants to feel different or whatever. It's just. 
I just feel in my life, and I'm only going to speak for myself, but I just feel like I'm operating on such a clearer, higher level than I ever possibly could have. And every aspect of my life is flourishing because of it. Um, I'm just so grateful that I found out what was going on before it was too late because, you know, I was on that road and I should be dead. I, I, was, I was nothing without the party. I was nothing without, you know, the hanger honors. I was, you know, those people filled me and, and my ego and, and everything. And, and it's so crazy to think now, to be sitting here saying this to the camera, that that to me sounds like a different person, like a different life. I, um, so the reason I'm doing this, and the reason I think it's so important to do is because I know that there's somebody right now looking at this video who needs to hear what I'm saying. And that, that is not you. The, the parties, the going out, the, the drinking. I, and don't get me wrong, like, if you can do it responsibly, then do it. I mean, it's an ama it's amazing thing to go out and celebrate with friends. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, for me is when it started going out with everybody and at the end it was just me alone, by myself, in some room, not knowing where I am, waking up in a ditch, you know, getting into fights, being arrested. I mean, I, it's just, I went down such a dark path that now sitting here in front of you, I can't even believe that was part of my story. It was really hard for me to find my identity after I had given that all up because I, I realized that so much of what I loved was that companionship. It wasn't actually the, you know, the, the, the substances that came with it. I mean, that was just a bonus for me, but that wasn't what I was really seeking. What I realized was that, and this was through a lot of, a lot of hard work uh, when I was in rehab, but what I realized is I, I just my constitution and kind of just through a lot of stuff uh, growing up and just certain, uh, certain experiences in my life, but I, I, I kind of, I had this feeling that I just wasn't worthy and I couldn't imagine that anybody would want to spend time with me if I wasn't that guy. Um, that I just wasn't good enough. And, uh, and the truth is, the sad truth of it all is that for a lot of those people, they're struggling with the same thing. And once I got sober, we didn't have anything in common, you know, because they're still doing that. And that's, uh, and I want to make it very clear just in this video that I am speaking strictly from a point of, of an, an addict and an alcoholic. I'm not speaking from a point of everyday person. There is nothing wrong with going to blow off some steam. I, I, I totally recommend it if, if you can handle it. You know, it's just, it's just something very different happens with me when I, when I touch that stuff and uh, to the point where I just can't stop. Um, so I think that was like the hardest thing to struggle with. It wasn't until months and months later that uh, of, of really just struggling with it. And before rehab, I was white knuckling it. I, you know, I would stay sober for a couple months and then I would relapse and a couple months and relapse. And then when I was away in rehab, I really uh, got to the root of my issues, you know, because just trying not to drink wasn't enough. I needed to figure out why I was doing this to myself. Why was I punishing myself? Because it wasn't fun anymore, but I was still doing it. And some people do it just going to meetings and some people, everybody has their own way to go about it. And I'm not saying that there's a right way, but for me, I, I, I am fully convinced that's what I had to do to get help. I mean, my life is so different now. I, I, get, I get my highs from, from life, uh, from getting up early, from going to the gym. I mean, getting sober is a total lifestyle change. It's not just not drinking, you know, there, there has to be ways to help fill that void and, and also understand that void because I think it's important not to substitute an addiction for another addiction. Um, now I've just, and I'm still working on it and I'm far from it, but now it's kind of, for me, it's more about really reflecting on well, when I'm feeling these ways, when I would usually be medicating it with, with booze or, or whatever, uh, or drugs or, or whatever it is, but now I, I kind of sit and I go, okay, why am I feeling this way? What is it inside me that is wrong? What am I not giving myself? And what, what do I need to change uh, to make, to, you know, to, uh, to solve this void or this pain I have inside of me? Um, I think through 
my sobriety, I've, I've really gotten to understand myself more. Uh, I really have to be fearlessly honest with myself, though, uh, because that's what it requires for me to be able to stay sober. So I work on it every day, and, you know, it's... Uh, and I'm proud of it. Like, I love being that guy now that people can rely on. That, you know, that my... For once in my life, I've got my siblings looking up to me. You know, and I've been the older brother for for you know 26 years and it's just just happening now so that's pretty crazy uh and i look at guys you know who who passed away younger than me or from similar reasons even just this year i remember i saw a few people i knew or or you know actors or you know musicians or whatever but i just got so lucky that i was able to to figure it out before Hand. And it's never over. I mean, it's just that I think for me now I've got so I have such a good idea of of the life I want to live, and and it's become so abundantly clear to me that this is the life I want um, that I find it harder and harder to ever like the temptations that used to be there aren't there anymore. But it's still so important for me to work at it, and that's something that I'll do every day for the rest of my life. It's amazing when you cut something like that out of your life, how clearly it separates the people who love you from those who loved that guy, you know, the, the partier, the one that they could get into shit with, you know, um, and those, those guys uh, aren't in my life anymore. Um, I was so, I expected to, it to be received well, and it was. I mean, it was hard for a lot of my close people friends and family to come to terms with, but it got to a point where it was so bad that it was like, okay, I get it. I mean, I went to rehab, so it's like, you can't really argue with that. At one point it's like, okay, this has gotten that bad that he has, he has to leave for you know, a month and disconnect from the entire world just to get better. I think everybody kind of respected that and my best friends support me wholeheartedly. And that's how I know they're my best friends is because that's never been what connected us the experiences and the conversations and the, the beautiful life experiences that we share is what connects us. Um, and then I was actually also surprised by how uh, uh, blatantly negative some people were about it as well uh, in terms of their lack of support. You know, I, I was actually shocked. There was, you know, some people totally knew that I was struggling with this because uh, I made it very clear and uh, and wanted nothing to do with it, you know, and, and, and would still kind of try to, this industry that, you know, it, it's got a dark side to it and it's really important to, to stick with those who, uh, uh, who are gonna make you your best self, you know. Um, but for the most part, I will say, uh, my support system has been incredible. And I think the more you speak about it, whether it's anxiety, depression, you know, alcoholism, addiction, or whatever, um, the more you speak about it, I think the more normal it becomes. Because I will say, one thing I was also surprised with, su- surprised about was when I spoke about my problems, how many other people were also like, yeah, dude, let me tell you, man. Like, Or even now, now I'm the guy that people call me and they go, man, like, I need to get sober. Like, I need your help. And it's good to be that dude, you know. So I hope whoever's watching this knows that uh, you can't do it alone. You need to get help. And, uh, and you'll be better for it. And, uh, and hang in there. You know, there's times where I thought that there wasn't a way out. And, uh, and I put the people who I loved closest to me through uh, so much, you know, torment. But there is, and I'm here today to sit here and tell you that it's a lot brighter on the other side. Uh, and without my sobriety, I don't have anything. You know, I don't get to sit here and, and live this amazing life of gratitude that I'm living now. Uh, and the promises that I'm learning when I, when I go into meetings, when I talk to other people, they, they really come true. Everything, I, I'm dependable now. You know, people can count on me because of the work I've put into to staying true to who I am and staying sober. So, um, 
so yeah, I'm Alexander Ludwig. I'm biting the bullet for addiction, and uh, you're not alone. And uh, it gets better. Thanks. Hey. <laughs>